This is an incredible time for the Sophie Davis Biomedical Education Program, the City University of New York School of Medicine, and for New York City and New Yorkers everywhere. We have strategically recruited undergraduate students and expertly trained medical students who are historically and traditionally underrepresented in medicine. They come from communities that are often underserved and in health professional shortage areas. 50 years ago, we had this radical idea that people who reflect the multiracial and cultural diversity who went into medicine could actually improve the health and well being of those people who live in New York City, New York, and beyond. In times of turmoil, we need to have better angels. And in comes Sophie Kessner Davis. I think of Sophie Davis as kind of like our mascot in a way, without Sophie Davis and her creation of this community, I would be lost. I would love science, but I don't know if I would be as far as I am right now. I was born in 2003, which makes me 21 now. And to think that 30 years before I was born, Sophie Davis kind of laid the, the groundwork for me to be able to do what I do today. We are always going to be Sophie students. Is that, that's how we kind of present ourselves on this campus as Sophie students. And we're CUNY School of Medicine students too, but we all call each other's Sophies. It was she who provided the foundational and transformational gift that leaves us with the Sophie Davis Biomedical Education Program today. Many domestic issues come and go, but healthcare usually keeps its place at the top of the list. The challenge for a growing segment of the population is getting access to good care. Today, there are a number of organizations and private interests helping to make more options available for more people. The Sophie Davis School of Biomedical Education was created in 1973 to educate talented students of diverse cultures and backgrounds to serve as primary care physicians in medically underserved communities. Central to our mission today, yesterday, and tomorrow is caring for the underserved. There are many people who contributed to the ethos of this school. In part, it's grounded in the work of Dr. H. Jack Geiger. Dr. Geiger was a two-time Nobel Peace Prize winner and an early chair of the Community Health and Social Medicine Department. He'd help us define the concept of social determinants of health and the novel idea at the time that where people work, live, play and pray influences their health outcomes and also leads to inequities in care. Jack started the first community health center in the United States. His entire approach was at the community and population level. I don't think there was maybe one other school in the whole country that was even saying we need more primary care physicians, we need to expand the pool of underrepresented minorities, and we need um, to work in underserved communities. A lot of our kids, of our students, uh, were the first in their families to go to college, let alone professional school. Some were out of uh, low-income families. A few were scattered because this was all state subsidized uh, from small town and rural areas. Uh, they were uh, a diverse mix. We wanted to get uh, students that couldn't otherwise go to medical school into that circuit and we wanted to do it in such a way that the student would be accomplished and feel accomplished. It's committed to the belief that the primary determinants of health are in the social order. So a person's income, uh, housing circumstances, kinds of work, levels of nutrition and so on are far more important than the availability of biomedical things. Looking at health uh, through a public health lens that they look not just at the individual but at the population. So where are people immigrated from? Uh, what kind of jobs did they do? How did that relate to disease? Uh, we made uh, about uh, 60 visits uh, all told, uh, you know, different patients. You cannot walk up to somebody and say, I'm from so-and-so, and expect to get an answer. You don't get that type of reaction. What you get instead is that everybody's suspicious of you. That, that was something that, we, you know, we didn't sort, we didn't sort of expect. 
we did a lot of work back in those days in the neighborhood health centers. It was uh, captivating to be involved in those living laboratories of discovery and uh, doing surveys about uh, health, uh, health-related uh, issues. And again, I think it was very formative and important to my education and the way I see the world as a now a mature physician so many years later. In all aspects of my career, I focused on um, um, public service and improving health of underserved populations. Both my parents are immigrants from Haiti, so first-generation American. Um, education was a, a big focus, but also just hearing about stories from home, you know, I definitely wanted to give back. Physicians can play a role in larger public health interventions um, and can play an important role in pushing this forward. Um, was introduced to me in the community health and social medicine lectures. You know, when we heard from some of the national leaders and the pioneers in public health, like Dr. Jack Geiger, who was chair of our department back then, sort of the stories of him writing prescriptions for food for malnourished um, families. And, you know, that's, those are compelling stories about how physicians can make a difference um, on a larger level. When I interviewed here, the mission of the school spoke to me. And I thought that's a place where I can really make a difference. And I don't feel any differently now. I came to the Sophie Davis program in 1986 as a microbiologist in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. I continued in that position until about 2001 when I moved into student affairs. One of my main responsibilities at that time was to run the process that matched students to cooperating medical schools. And it became very clear if the school was going to survive, we needed to have our own ability to grant the MD degree. The then president of City College, Lisa Kowiko, was a big supporter in those efforts. We believe that by having a BSMD program with a fully accredited medical school here at CUNY, at City College, that our students will never lose the focus of that mission. In October of 2021, I have the honor and the privilege of becoming the Dean of the City University of New York School of Medicine and the Sophie Davis Biomedical Education Program. Job one was getting full LCME accreditation. Our first Sophie MD class graduated early to go back to neighborhoods where they came from to care for their neighbors. We are very proud that 50 years later, the Leonard and Sophie Davis legacy and vision lives on through our alumni and students. There aren't many med schools like us in the entire country, and that alone makes me very proud to be part of this institution. I think our mission of serving the underserved really speaks volumes to all of our characters, and it shows the type of doctors that we're aspiring to become. Each year I've been here, I've truly enjoyed it. I feel like the faculty, the staff, they're with us every step of the way, and I couldn't be more grateful to be here. From the 50 years that the CUNY School of Medicine has been here, they've already done so much, and this is just the beginning in what's to come. So it feels like we're making history in a way, and it just feels really good to be part of it. I consider it uh, one of my greatest honors. I'm looking forward to continuing to be a part of this big CUNY Med family, and here's to the next 50.